Hey guys, Stephen from Heresy Academy here. So we've now come to, I think, our 14th video. Um, it'll be part 13 because we've got the 4.5 video. And in this video, we're going to actually learn how to display our text. So within our game manager script, we created this public static integer score and then we set it to zero. And we also will increase that score when we hit, when we hit blocks. So what we're going to now do is open up model develop and we'll go into straight away um, we'll go into our game manager script and what we want to do first of all um, is set it up so that we can use our using unity engine dot ui now we've not set anything up that will count as our ui item just yet uh, we'll do this um, we'll do this after the script it doesn't matter which order you do it we can Pick and choose. So we've public and text, but with a capital T. Uh, this is now going to we're going to put a text object into our game, and this will be this one. I'm going to call this our score text, and that's about that. The only thing uh, that we may struggle with on this specific type of game is the positioning of the score. Um, you'll understand that more in I think the next video. Um, if not the next video, the one after when we start actually building our bricks because we're going to set it up to go from corner to corner so if we set your score over it, it may not work but we'll go into that uh, more in a moment so what I'm going to do because uh, I'm going to set the score twice um, set the score text twice rather than writing out the same code and then going to another script like here and then um, the ball for example and then uh, I would just declare another text and then setting up again and again. We're going to make our own variable, our own function, and it's going to be a public static. And then again with the void, I'm going to call this our set score. And then do the parentheses and don't do uh, semicolons. Uh, and then inside here, we're going to take our text object from here, which we've, we've called score text. which for some reason isn't picking up just excuse me a minute for some reason it's not picking up I'm just take away the static a moment yeah we can pick up our score text okay uh, ignore that for a second there make sure it's just public void um, may have made an error on something I'll just check this out because again it's going red again so I'm worried that I may have did something wrong but anyway uh, score text dot text because we're now taking the text part of our text object I'm going to make it equal and this is what I wanted to say so I wanted to say score with a double colon or just normal colon and then uh, with a space and then we'll do plus and then our score and then what we're going to do as well I'm going to do a dot function and we're going to use to string. What this is, it returns it as a string because uh, our a string is text, technically, um, so using letters. But obviously, we're going to keep our number here. So, like we've used in, I think, 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 think there. So, this would have returned a float and instead we told it to return an integer. So, that's like typecasting. That's what it's called. I think I mentioned that. Or may, maybe not. Uh, and because it's a function, we want to make sure we do parentheses as well. So by doing this, rather than bringing back a number, because it, it doesn't like to mix an integer and a float, or a float to a string, or an integer to a string. So we just tell it to make sure it's a string. And it does whatever technological, mathematical voodoo it needs to do to make sure that it works. So what this will read... To start with, it will read score colon space zero because our score will be zero uh, unless we change that. But we, we've told it to set it here. So this is our public void here. So underneath our start section, underneath our score, we're just going to call our function set score like that. So when it starts the game, it will set this up. Now, uh, what we need to do is we'll need to cross over this to our ball where we get a collision uh, somewhere down here.
but we'll do that uh, we'll do that in the next part I just want to now bring it back to unity you may get an error saying it's not got an object but that's because we've not made it so you don't need to worry about that see if it's loaded uh, no that's fine so we'll clear off these because you don't need them okay so just like in our menu let's see if I can go back to the menu real quick open up the main menu we created a canvas and then we have text, play button, options button, text and buttons. This text that we're going to make now, go back to our game, we're just going to make a text. So go down to UI and go to make a text. You still get your canvas and you still get your event system. But all we want to mess around with now is the text. So for now, um, can I actually see the text object at the moment? That's fine. Just want to zoom this in. Uh, the reason we're zooming this in is because we want to see position here. So what I'm also going to do, uh, console. Just going to drag this down here. The reason I'm doing this is just so I can close it off a bit. I like to do that so I can uh, have a better game view. Because if I'm on the project view, it only likes to be that big, or that small. Whereas the ones you can zoom down. But anyway. So going back over to our text here, we're now going to call it score or score text. I don't know why I just deleted that. And score text. Then in the text section, we will we'll just write score zero. Uh, the reason we're just going to write that is relatively simple. Where is it? Ah, oh, it's there. That's why we can't see it. Okay. Um, yeah, even though when, when we start our script, it'll automatically put our score forwards. We don't need to really change anything here, but it's just for us to see. If we had more than one lot of text, we'd be able to differentiate. That's the score, that's that, that's that, etc. So, first things first then, we'll change the rectangle transform or the rect transform. And uh, like we did in the menu uh, videos, we use shift and, uh, shift and alt. And then we decided, let's say, we wanted to put it there. And now you may be able to see, you may be able to make it out. It's quite small there, but it, the colour of it is also no good. So again, to capture that again, you press Shift and Alt. You see these changes. So pressing Shift, it's, it tells you that that's where the pivot will be. Um, you can obviously pick any of these. And then also setting the position. So you will hold down uh, Alt, and then you can pick you want it there, you want it there. So you might be able to notice it's moving around. It completely depends on where you want to put it. So for this, I'm thinking of putting it in, let's say, the bottom corner there, the bottom left corner. And it may look pretty terrible at the moment. Um, that's just due to the fact that you can't see it, if that makes sense. Um, the, way, the way to change that, in the, the text script, <clears throat> come down here to the color section, and let's just change color. Change straight away to white if you want. You can give it sort of a yellowy, goldy colour if you can find a nice gold. Total up to you. Uh, maybe a bright blue. Can just edit these. Might go for black, bright blue just because we can. Now uh, we set its position and we set its pivot. Although if we just click on it and then press F, no, maybe we click on it here instead. There we go. Right. So we set its position here and we just want to. Drag our little what's in the cools, the, the triangle folk. Oops, right, you can actually change that as well if you want. Drag our tri triangle folk over here, um, just to make sure. Do you remember that it sets its its relative position? So now, no matter how much you scale the screen, that's where it's going to be, sort of thing. Right, okay. One thing to notice, uh, when you do scale it to a certain amount, see I dragged this down before, but you want to just... Tell you what, we'll go back and back, yeah, because I'd accidentally dragged it down. So, it's not uh, it's not infinite or whatever it's called, because when you go to a certain size, it does, it scales the whole thing, so eventually it does lose the text. Now, um, we didn't. This didn't happen on the menu. The reason for this is the horizontal overflow and the vertical overflow. We set these two overflow. So now, if you scale it, it overflows its boundary box. But now, if you can see, it's 
still not looking great. But if you also consider, you'll never ever put this uh, <laughs> this side screen. I can't imagine you setting it to this side screen. Well, the simple fix for this would be just to tweak it a bit. That's about as small as I can make it make it go. I will set its relative position to here instead. I mean, you can always go that one step further and go like that if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. Um, let me just do that. Go back to this. We can just close this off. So as you can see, it overflows anyway. So regardless of what you want to do, it's uh. It doesn't really make much difference in what it is I'm trying to say. Uh, the scaling doesn't really matter too much. But as you can see now, I've dragged it out to a bigger screen and its position is here. Now, uh, one thing I do want to point out is uh, it's very, very close to the edge, regardless of anything. And the solution for that would be to move it along, you know, move it out here. Still keep uh, dragging our pivot so we're touching it. Let's pull it out there or something. Um, but now if you drag it out, so if you look at it in this sort of view, this is where the score is going to be. Change our font size over here in the inspector view, try 20, that's a bit bigger. Line spacing, you can mess around with that, but it doesn't really make much of a difference, you know, because you've got one line. So let's just revert that to back to what it was. There we go. Now if you can change whether it's rich text or rich, rich text or not, give it a bit of a bold look. Change the font if you really wanted to. Uh, not actually got any other fonts in here yet. Do keep. I, I keep meaning to put them in, but I never bother. Oops. <laughs> Don't put it as no font, otherwise it won't work. Now, you, obviously, I imagine you'd know a bit about uh, alignment. Where if you've ever used um, Microsoft Office or any text uh, text tool or on websites and stuff like that, change the alignment here. Which, if you'll now go back to your scene view. The actual box that we're in, it sort of it sets its alignment based off that. So I'll go for that one. You can set it up one and down one. Again, that gets a bit tricky. Um, where do we want it? We don't want it too high. Maybe put it central a bit. Uh, let's have a look. If there's anything else we could change, I mean, we can change almost. almost anything that we want but this will do really for now um, in fact let's just put this to a score 5 okay oops let's not add another line though uh, let's think now put this onto our game manager script yeah our game manager should be attached to our camera still yep so as you see now the game manager script it says score text and none what we do now is we grab our score text from a hierarchy drop it in there so this is now the public text object, which we'll now set to score, and then whatever the score will be, which will be zero. We'll uh, we'll set the score to zero before, pardon me, before we run this, um, just in case uh, we'd. Let's imagine now you, you'd played the game, and you'd lost, and you reset the game, but you got ten points, and then you set the score when you start this. You set the score to score plus score, and then it's ten points. And then you set score to zero. So for for a bit you'll have score is ten until we do the next bit where you start adding the points and setting it again. And then it'll uh it'll change to what's in the called. Uh I'll do something anyway. I forgot what it is. Let me see it's going to do. Oh uh, yeah, and then it'll change back to one, two, three. So that's why the order here is important. You set the score to zero. And then you tell the text to set the score, which will read zero, sort of thing. Hope that makes sense. Uh, so yeah, we set it to five here. Let's just save our scene. Then we click play. You should see it go to zero. There you go, it's gone to zero. And as you'll see below my mouse now, you can see it's added the score, added the score, and added the score. Pardon me. Let's pause that second. Um, mine may look a little bit different because it's got three here. You may be reading. See what I can do now. Uh, where is it? Where does it do this now? Oops. I can't actually remember how I did this now, actually. Let's 
So we're going to just open this up a bit. Uh, oh, there we go. My bad. Right. So yeah, mind may, maybe reading it here where it's got a three. Uh, if you wanted to do that, rather than have it go and reach each one, you just click on this collapse here. I completely forgot how I did it. I've done it. I've had it like this for ages. It's just to avoid having like added score, added score, added score, and just like bombard you with endless messages. Just if in case you're using a debug.log to, uh, to test out different features to make sure they're working, and then you've got one constant one that does every single update, it keeps putting the message there, it'll keep running down going da 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 da, -da and you'll miss the one you're looking for. But if you click collapse, it'll just tell you this is it's done it three times, and then it'll do the next one, and it'll do another one etc and if you do that one five times I'll tell you sort of thing but yeah that would be that and uh, what's the next bit now I completely forgot what it is oh now we want to have it so that the ball adds to the score and we set the score so what I was trying to do um, I think I may have messed it up so go to a ball now uh, we've already got it here so ignore this warning here from uh, application.load level we'll change this afterwards in another video how do you get to go away now? no uh, it won't go away it's doing it ok anyway ignore that then so you've got if game over and obviously it's not going to be game over you've got your game edge so if you hit a game edge you don't want a score if you hit the paddle you don't want a score and then else destroy collider.game object game manager dot score plus plus and then debug dot log added score what i was trying to do um, is run the crossover from the game manager and then dot te uh, not test i was running test before uh, what do we call it now set score yeah it's not doing it so what i was trying to do as well was bring this over to be a static void let me bring this over to the set score. So you can see that there is why I started it as a static. And you bring it as a static over here. And let me just do that. So with, with the premises as well, make sure you do the premises because it is a function or it's a void. Save this script and save this script. In theory, it should work now. Uh, the reason I stopped it before was because this was coming up with red and I didn't like it and it just wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. So uh, I just decided to do public void. And uh, if you can see as well, the public static integer score, uh, I think I explained static before in the sense that it doesn't need an object reference. So I've used a static here for the void. So I can just call it over here, game manager dot set score. Um, which will be in the else section of our ball so underneath paddle underneath game edge we know if we're not hitting the game edge we're not hitting the paddle we are hitting the bricks so we're destroying the bricks we're adding to the score and then we're setting the score bring us over to unity just to check see if we do get any errors hope we don't and we do uh, just pause that a second Oh, no, let's bring this out. Oh, no, 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 no. Be your own screen. There we go. Sorry about that. Not full screen. Sugar. Just drag this out. Uh, let's see what our error is. Object an object reference is required to access non static member game manager score text. Right. Okay. Doesn't matter then. I'll just basically repeat what we've done um, for this one. So get rid of the static, because if, if you're watching this and you know where my error is, please do leave a comment because this is one bit that I don't I don't get the hang of. So we're just I'm just copying this public void set score. I'm going to go to my ball script and down here I'm just going to create. In fact, actually, ooh, my bad. That's inside. Make sure you do it after this one, so it's its own. We just make it a void, it doesn't have to be public now. Uh, as you can see, these have gone red. The reason for this is because we go at the top, let's go using unityengine.ui, semicolon that, 
and then we want to go for public text then we'll call this score text see uh, there are times where I have no idea what's uh Ooh, not bad get rid of game score here now uh, it's not picking up score because you want to go sorry there are times where I miss out on some some bits of code and I don't know I don't know everything there is to know so as much as I'm trying to teach you things there will be things that I come across and this is a method that will work with what I've done now is I've copied my void set score I've changed it well copied public and got rid of public so I've just done void set score it's a new a new void over here score text dot text so up here I've added a public text score text which will do the exact same thing and we'll drag in the text afterwards and then uh, what we've done is we've gone equals score then colon then uh, space and then end your brackets plus then game manager dot score dot two string and then there's your parentheses because that's the function or method so what we'll do now underneath our else where I put the game manager um, I'm sure I, I know there's a way to cross over scripts and I've completely forgotten about it right now um, maybe it's something I need to uh, reference at the top perhaps but yeah um, what we're going to do here is run our set score function just like we was going to do game manager dot set score just do set score instead and then you save that let's go and save our script here so one, one last time the game manager script make sure it is just a public void set score and then same code there is a score text dot text equals a score then plus score dot two string and then in the ball text underneath our on collision enter 2d so even if you want to just add another space here so on, underneath on collision enter 2d going to down we've gone void set score then the the, uh, the code is score text dot text equals score plus game manager dot score dot two string then within the uh, collider and on collision enter 2d in the else section underneath our paddle we've just added set score function and also the public text score text and add in the using unity UI so run back to unity now we shouldn't get an issue hope we don't it's quite early in the morning you see so I'm uh, my brain's sort of not registering every single possible thing even though I've got notes it doesn't really help sometimes because uh, I decided it'd be fun and if, if, oh, why did I just close it off I'm going to clear these my bad I decided it'd be fun if I uh, what's it called put some question marks and said test this out test that out and I forgot to test it Okay, so we've added that to our ball script. I believe you have. Yeah. So on our ball now, um, score text. Go to your camera, just grab your score text there. Save it. And press play. So now you've got one. Now you've got two. And now you got three. Okay. So yeah. Um, what's this now? It was flashing for some reason. Right. So what you could do in this instance is completely forget about this really. I mean that can just be a void now. It doesn't even need to be public. But completely forget this. And completely forget our text here. And you could just do it all in here. And just have your public text object score text. In the start function just uh, set the score text. So use your set, so there, set score there. So you set your score text in the start set. You know, have it all inside the ball script rather than the game manager so you don't got the same code twice. For this, uh, I'm not too bothered. We'll do a cleanup video uh, towards the end anyway. Um, but yeah, that, that's it. That's how you uh, add your score and get it to point out here. So I don't have to have it as five. I could just call this, uh, this is where the score goes. Obviously, as you can see now, the, the issue is uh, it runs off the screen based on its position on here. But that's something you take more note of if you were to, uh, you know, extend this and drag it along and all that stuff. But we don't need to worry about that. 
a score here or something like that. It, like I say, it doesn't matter because it changes as soon as you press play. One more example is this. I'm just going to click play again. You'll see it go to score zero and then score one, two, and three. If I survive that long, it is. There you go. Two and three. Okay, so that's that. Um, uh, yeah, there was a bit of an issue there with the uh, the the crossover from the two scripts. Uh, if I remember how to do it, I'll just update the video or something. Uh, but yeah, that's that for this one. The next video, you'll be in for a nice treat because we're going to we're going to get stuck in with a decent amount of coding, um, some some more masks to consider. Uh, we did we did a bit of considering a bit of maths using our mathematical functions uh, for like the ball, the velocity, setting up the edge collider and stuff like that. What we're going to do in the next video, well, I hope it's going to be the next video unless I change my mind, will be to set up the bricks so that um, it registers the. Let's go down here. So it'll register the camera and then it'll decide, right, well, if the camera's this big, then we'll put a brick here, we'll put a brick there, put a brick there, etc., etc. And we'll also tell it to, uh, to decide, let's have two rows or three rows, etc., stuff like that. We'll tell it it's allowed to scale it for us. Um, we'll also set up the scale so it, you know, it, it decides, well, if I want, let's have a, see if I can give you a quick example. So you grab that one. But, well, let's say they weren't going to fit. I don't know if these will fit or not. Okay. So where we've got this one now, we've got the gap here and the gap here. Um, I'm pretty sure that's actually kind of touching a bit. I don't know. Yeah, it was touching a bit. What it'll do, it'll decide, it'll take the the the, uh, the parameters of the brick, so it'll take like the width and the height, um, it'll take the width and the height of the screen, so even if we decided to go for like a 1610, it'll do the same thing, go bop, 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 uh, let's just drop this back to, was it 5 to 4? Yeah, it's 5 to 4. Um, what was the same? Yeah, so it'll take all the measurements of the bricks, it'll decide... If it has to change it a little bit, it will. Uh, it will automatically place them at the top and then from one side to the other. We can tell it that we want... Um, what, do, what do we want? Uh, I, I get rows and columns mixed up now. Uh, columns are going down, aren't they? Or rows. Right. So we'll put in a columns variable, which will be decided within the maths, and that'll decide how many columns it needs. And then that'll help it decide how wide the bricks need to be. So that'll take the X measurement, uh, we'll decide how many rows we want. So we could say we want three rows, so it'll create three rows of bricks for us. We'll set it up to randomly choose um, between our, our prefabs. So what you can do as well, um, you can finish off the rest of these and drag these out, make these prefabs. It'll randomly set your bricks. And as well, what you can do is you can set it to a bigger screen, um, tell it that that's what you want to do. You can set it all the way. Uh, three aspects like that you, you could do it that way and it will set it up completely all the way across At the moment I'm just working on five to four because that's just the way I want to make this but yeah so that's what's planned for the next video um, like I say I hope it's the next video because uh, I, I uh, had a bit of a brainstorm last night and through the night uh, I've come up with a bit of plan for the next few videos so I've sort of given myself a bit more structure to work with and I started writing out some of the code on notes, so I shouldn't, pardon me, I shouldn't be uh, saying um, um, um a lot. But I don't know, that's how I speak, get over it. Get over it in a nice way, though, get over it in a nice way. Um, and show that you're getting over it in a nice way by giving this video a thumbs up, subscribe so you can see the next videos, and leave some comments if you've got any questions. Um, if anybody does know uh, the crossover between these two scripts, um, I've completely forgotten it, it's gone off my mind, so drop a comment about that. Uh, I'll probably remember it or I'll just go and find it out myself uh, at some point. Uh, yeah, I can't believe I've completely forgot it. Uh, so I think, so display our score, create the score, set it up. Yep, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.